Tintagel is one of the most spectacular historic sites in Britain and it continues to inspire visitors from across the world. This year we're embarking on a project to construct a bridge, a bridge that will restore a connection which has existed throughout history. The bridge is going to be made out of slate and steel and it's going to have an oak handrail. It was important to us that we use local suppliers and fabricators for these materials. We chose slate because it is a feature of the North Cornwall landscape. We're going to be resorting the slate from a local Cornish supplier, the Delabole Slate Company. The quarry is about a thousand years old, probably the oldest operating slate quarry in the world. The slate itself was formed about 350 million years ago. So these blocks of 2 to 20 tonne go through primary saws to reduce them in size. They then go over to the splitters. The actual splitting process is very much the same as it's always been for centuries. So it's split by hand. The edges will be dressed on a dressing machine. And then they'll be sawn to dimension secondary saws. The Tadra Bridge will use around about 90 to 100,000 individual slates. To give an idea of the scale, a splitter might make around a million slates in his whole career. Materials were particularly selected so that we could design a bridge which was in keeping with the landscape. The steel allows us to have a very slender bridge, so it has a minimal impact on the views of the castle. We're working with a steel fabrication company based in Plymouth called Underhill Engineering. They will make 18 main sections and they will do what they call a trial erection. Sections of the bridge are put together to see that they fit properly. Each half of the bridge will be made in the workshop and then dismantled and later on brought to site and put back together again. One of the key considerations is logistics. How do we get the large materials needed to make the bridge down the windy lanes that lead to the castle? We will be overcoming this by having helicopters that bring in some materials to the site and also by erecting a cable crane which will span the valley and allow us to winch in sections of the bridge when it's ready for installation. We hope that the bridge will restore the historic connection within the castle and will encourage many more visitors to come and appreciate the site.